of our history in Nigeria have not really favored women. For example, when talking about the political history of Nigeria, we easily mention Obafemi Awolowo, the likes of Inamdi Azikwe. But the question is, why do we easily forget the likes of Fumilayo Ransom Kuti? Where is Jeanette Mokelo? And why do we easily leave out Margaret Ego? These were active women in Nigerian politics. But not any longer, because the program Women in Politics showcases the activities of women in politics. Of course, we feel, okay, the participation is still low, but even at the low ebb, we're still showcasing them because whether we like it or not, women are active in politics. And on this edition of Women in Politics, as our guests, we have the former national women leader of APC, that is Barista Sharon Ikiazo. You will enjoy this edition. I am Ebulomo Adekwale, your host. It's a great pleasure sitting side by side with the former national woman leader of the APC. Good day. Good day to you. Thank you very much. You look much. beautiful. Thank you. Let's start on a light note. You are always on your turban. Why? Well, to me, this is the simplest form of a headscarf. Mm. Yes, and this has always been my style. Always like since when? Since I grew up, I would really? say. Yes, it's always been my style. I like uh, simplicity. It has always been my trademark. Yeah. I'm not into the big gillies, like I call them on a lighter note as well. <laughs> I call them satellite dishes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, now going to the issue of women. You are one of the very few women who feel the low participation of women in politics is coming from women themselves. The blame should be put on them. Why do you say this? Because if you go to some other quarters, mm. they will tell you we are not allowed to do it and that is why we're not participating in politics. But you differ on that. Why? I differ on that because I've always said women have not shown much interest in politics. And yet in their homes, in their lives, they play politics. Mm. In the marketplace, it's politics. In your home, any polygamous home, it's all about politics. And like I've always said, life is politics politics is life so why can't women play the politics but at the same time trying to push women to go into politics you have to think of our traditional backgrounds exactly because I the was going ethnic there. and religious sensibilities what a particular woman can do in a certain area another woman cannot do the same in another area like I say I'm a feminist but I still put tradition and customs at the back of my mind. If we are saying that women lack the interest, there are some of them. We know the way politics is run in Nigeria. Yes. It, it seems you must have money. Or even if you're on the average level, you go into politics and it looks like everything just turns around for you. But where do women get the money for their campaigns? We know how expensive campaigns can be. So even if they have the willingness to go into politics, how do they go about getting the financial capability to do this? Women, you've got your husbands, you've got your brothers, you've got your family, you've got your friends. We have to try and demonetize politics, remove money from politics. Like in my training workshops with women, I tell them, brand yourself before you come into politics. What do I mean by branding? You live in your community, in your local community. You know the needs of your community. You're probably working in some organization or in an office. You find a way to bring the company you work with to come and carry out their corporate social responsibility in your community. They will tie you down to bring in that project, be it a borehole or maternal uh, child care clinic that you have got them built. That way, you have branded yourself. When you now come out for politics, people already know you for bringing good things. Even simple things like paying 5,000 or 10,000 naira for a girl's education. There are a lot of women who are out there who cannot afford to pay school fees for their children. The cost of a bag, of a designer bag, can train four or five girls in Nigerian universities today. So why don't we prioritize what we want to do. That way, money will not be an issue for women in politics. And again, women forget our numbers. We're over 
half of Nigeria's population, 51%. Please tell them because yeah. the few men 50, are more. 51% 51, 51 of Nigeria's population are women. So why don't we use our numerical strength? You have covered elections. You look at the long queues. How many men do you see? The majority are women. So why do women remain at the lower rung of politics? That is the question we should be asking ourselves. We have asked that question and we are now addressing it by capacity building of the women. But still, the, the picture of that woman who should brand herself you paint is still that of an average woman. What about the rural woman who doesn't carry designer bags, who cannot even afford 5,000 naira or 10,000 naira, as it were, to pay for someone else's school okay, fees, okay. who probably doesn't work in a company because she has no job. Okay, let's say, okay. She a doesn't participate in woman, politi okay. politics. She has a church society. You have the Catholic women's organization, you have the Anglican women, they all have church societies. When they go for their meetings, they tell their church members, oh, we need this in our community. Can you help us talk to other parishioners who have access to these companies? And she draws that into her community. She'll be known for that, and she has branded herself because she has represented her people without even realizing it. They do their, uh, what do they call it, susu, you know, community uh, banking. They all contribute money and give to one woman to start something. It's all part of it. These are the kind of women. As much as I'm playing politics at the national level, I can't do anything without the rural women. I call it the bottoms up approach. I start with the rural women. By the time you educate them, number one, once they know their rights, that they can aspire to any position they want, be it their ward unit or their pulling unit. Once they realize that you encourage them, they can get there as well. We have strong women. You're the second woman I'm meeting on women in politics that yes. claims I'm not a politician by profession. I'm a professional in politics. Yes. And the same question I'm going to ask you, yes. what is the difference between someone who does politics all the way and someone who is just a professional in politics? It shouldn't be a career. A professional in politics says that you have been in a profession or you are still in a profession. I'm a lawyer. This year I'll be marking 30 years at the bar. Yes. In Nigeria, politics should be about service, even going into governance. It should be about service, not patronage. In Nigeria, it's about patronage. That is why they're making politics a profession. If you're going in for service, you're going there to serve your people. You're bringing the wealth of your knowledge. You're bringing the ethics of your profession, like I'm bringing the ethics of my law profession into politics. Integrity is my watchword, doing the right thing. So that way, I do not depend on politics to survive. So there's a limit to what I can do. There's a limit to how far I would go in doing the wrong things in politics because it is not my profession. My profession is law. So you are part of those who do not support full-time politicking? No. What about uh, the resolution being adopted at the floor of the ongoing national conference yes. agitating that it should be part-time legislature? Oh, do yes. you support that I too? Support, I support that very much. I support that very much. How effective would that be? Because corruption is corruption no, number, anyway. Number, you look number at one, it. it will cut costs. The day we stop making politics attractive for people then we start getting decent people who are ready to serve their people coming in there most people coming into politics now is all for patronage what they can get what is in it for me that is why people are complaining that is why we have bad governance because nobody's held accountable in our father's days until your community comes and puts you forward for elective office you won't come out but now you see people with money just coming from nowhere and coming into politics and now dictating what should happen. Then those distant people, the so-called professionals, will now keep quiet. To me, the worst culprit are those who keep quiet when things are going wrong. People like me refuse to keep quiet. That's why I said I must get into politics, come into that platform, make that change, and make them do the right thing for people. And I'm starting with women. Women are the most neglected. 
most marginalized before you even talk about the youth and the disabled. If we are talking about women participation in politics, how realistic is that? Because you joined politics 2005, am I correct? 2011. Oh, you joined politics, the Sosaliso airline. The Sosaliso plane crash happened December 2005. And that was what made me say, I must have a platform. That was what prompted you, That was what yes. prompted me into politics, because that was a devastating you know, incident in my life. I didn't lose a child in that air crash, but I could feel the pain of the mothers and empathize. I had a son who finished from Loyola Jesuit. I still wear this armband with the date on it. And we all know that plane crash could have been prevented. Negligence. There was no consequence of action. Nobody paid for their negligence. We protested all we liked, but not, nothing happened. Mm. So 2005, you were prompted that yeah. you could do something for the nation, and 2011, you went into politics fully. And you mentioned that when you went into politics, all your children have graduated yes. from school. How can a young woman who's just coming up, who probably just started a family, mm. go into politics? Because nowadays we're agitating. We will need younger folks in yes. politics, not the older ones. They should allow for younger generation. So are you saying everybody who wants to go into politics, especially women, mm. should wait till their children no, have graduated no, from no, school no, before no, they go no, into politics? No, 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 no. I mean, though I say I don't encourage young women coming into politics, with the mentorship program we put in place now, with the older politicians, inclusive of the women in parliament, as those who are senators and house of reps they will now be mentoring them and be going about with them and teaching them the rudiments of politics because you find a lot of the men their PAs their essays you know all their aides are men so they learn the ropes that's how they are far ahead of us in politics they've gone through tutelage women haven't it's a lot easier for an older woman to be in politics most of the meetings are never ending there's no time limit to the meetings so if you're a much older woman it's easier for you to leave your home and be out there at the meetings the traveling as well it's another one you have to contend with but with this mentoring program that women in politics have put in place the younger ones we are now creating space for them let them come in run for offices actively participate then when they're much older they can now take their place so in politics. you're establishing the fact that a younger woman like me would not find it easy going to politics now. No, I'm, I'm a realist. It will not be easy for you. Mm. You have to contend with the sexual harassment. Oh, yes. It's everywhere. It's not only in the corporate world. It's there in politics as well. You have to contend with the violence. As violence? Well. Yes, there's a lot of violence against women. Like throwing chairs at the floor of parliament? Thro thro yes not only throwing chairs at parliament at political rallies mm. all manner of people are there how safe are women because that's another angle we're going into as well to get the idea of police to make sure that during elections every female candidate has adequate police protection you find is the men who can afford it but the ig should as a matter of uh, urgency look into that for the 2015 elections for female candidates between you and i let's pretend the word is not here now yes. what african man mm -hmm. would allow his woman go into politics i'm talking about your personal life now yes. how did your husband cope because i know how busy you can be or how if, is he coping if you have a man who is understanding and who trusts you he will be the one encouraging you is it that, that would be your limit? You had no issues at first? Once there is trust, there won't be any issues. And once you tell them this is where you're going, and I never go anywhere alone. That's why I always harp on older women being better in politics. If you can't afford uh, bodyguards or not, you take your sons with you. There's nowhere I go without any one of my sons with me. Whatever meeting, whatever time, wherever I'm traveling to, is there. Core TV News presents a platform with presence in over 30 states of the Federation. Be sure to be here. For live coverage of events, we have the capacity to deliver from anywhere in Nigeria and beyond. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550.
or 0803-724-9733-014-533-407. Our 24-hour news station. So let's move to national issues now. The office of the First Lady. How important do you think it is? Presently, it is not recognized constitutionally. Yes. Are you part of those who believe it should be institutionalized and put into the Constitution, considering the role First Ladies already play? If the First Lady knows her role as someone who compliments her husband, she doesn't need to institutionalize or constitutionalize her office. The President has all the arms of government under him. There is no sector that affects us all that is not covered by ministries and MDAs. So why should we now constitutionalize the office of the First Lady? It's just there to compliment the husband. There are roles she can play. You can see the First Lady of uh, the United States of America. Does she need her office to be constitutionalized to be able to play her role as the mother of the nation? We have issues uh, with meeting the Millennium Development Goals. What she should be doing is going around and making sure that Nigerians and uh, government agencies are working towards fulfilling the NDAs, I mean the NDG goals. Like maternal uh, infant mortality in Nigeria, it's very high. What has she done towards that? How many health facilities has she visited? Does she hold like meetings with the first ladies of all the states, have like a peer review mechanism with the first ladies? What programs are you doing to help women, to help children in your state, and to help governments? That is what they should be concentrating on. Not institutionalizing? No, they cannot, we cannot institutionalize that. We're we already, we already over bloated. What if she we didn't have... run? She didn't run for an election. Mm -hmm. Her husband ran for an election. It's just like the wife of a governor. Should we institutionalize her office? It's the husband we elected, not the wife. We respect the fact that she's there. So, just in case, and very soon we're hoping to have a female president. You're saying the man should just do the same. Then the first man, my or what are we my, going to my call Margaret him? Thatcher mm. was the president of the United Kingdom. Her husband, Dennis, was there. But we did not run the same culture. Well, so we cannot compare our democracy with their democracy. Is that what you're saying? We run a patriarchal kind of culture. So would the, you say the that the man well, should... The UK as well is patriarchal. You do not trace your lineage or inherit through your mother. You inherit through your father. It's the same thing world over. It's only a few countries like Ghana, that do the matrilineal system. Every country is a patriarchal system. It depends on how far they want the women to develop. I can see this tag on your clothes, bring back our girls with a hashtag. Yes. We know that at this stage, after over two months, yes. these girls are still locked up somewhere that we do not know. And these protests to bring back our girls as fizzled out, we we scarcely see protests or marches for these girls any longer. No, yeah, it hasn't fizzled out. Really? The We're not seeing the, any. No, the sit-outs are still happening in Abuja. There's no point we marching on the streets of Abuja anymore. If not for this hashtag, bring back our girls, the world wouldn't have known about this. This happened on the 14th. On the 30th of uh, that month, the president was now giving his media uh, briefing and he couldn't even remember the day the girls were abducted. We had the protest March 30th of May. That was the first one that all mothers came out irrespective of political parties. We are all out there not as members of any political party but concerned mother different groups and we marched to bring world attention and Nigeria's attention to these girls and they must be brought the question I was going to ask is, in one of your interviews, you compared Malala Yousafzai yes. of Pakistan yes. and these girls, trying yes. to give these girls hope. But do you think these girls are Nigerian girls? Because one of those who escaped could not even speak English. If a drawing line of comparison between Malala Yousafzai of Pakistan and 
these chibok girls yeah. how good do you think that comparison is considering the level of literacy and exposure if a secondary school girl could yes. not even now, speak now, english now you are showing you know i'm bringing to fall the decay in our educational system i compared them to malala because they had the same dream as malala they wanted an education if i didn't have an education i won't be sitting here talking with you if I didn't have an education, I wouldn't have been able to face Christiana Mampo and speak because I had an education and a very good one at that. It's every girl's right to have an education. It is sad that our government has let us down with the level of education we have now. So that is why I compared them to Malala because to me their only crime was that they wanted an education. That's why they continued going to school. They could have stayed in the comfort of their parents' home. But they came out because of that dream. If you ask any of them, what do you want to be? Oh, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a teacher. Why? How can we kill their dream? We can't kill their dream. So forget the fact that you cannot compare their English to that of someone like Malala. It's the standards that Malala had in Pakistan and the standard we have in Nigeria, which is falling by the day. One would think that when we get to situations like this, mm -hmm. talking about decay, talking about corruption, and the insecurity that led to the abduction of these girls, yes. the nation should rise as one. Yes. Many have criticized the opposition parties yes. for continuous accusations. Mm -hmm. And we know that a while ago, the APC actually came out with lists of what they expect the ruling government, the ruling party, to do. The question has been asked, if APC knows ways of bringing these girls out, why don't you just go ahead and do it or join hands with the government and do it instead of listing we out can't on go, the... We can't go ahead and do it. We're not the government in power. But can't you put we hands together we, we with have the government We in have power? made suggestions to government and we are standing with government. Remember the inter-party summit? Yes. We have offered our help. It's for government to accept. It's the same way that the United States and other countries who are members of the United Nations Security Council have offered help. It's for the sovereign country to now accept that help. And to what level of help do they need? I say it, and I say it unequivocally, in this Chibok Girls saga, we should all come together as one country. It affects each and every one of us. I'm not from the Northeast. This is happening in the Northeast. It can happen anywhere else in Nigeria. So it is sad. Opposition government is not the only ones to blame. The ruling party, the government in power is to blame as well. You do not go after people because they are criticizing you. In leadership, you should be able to absorb all the criticism, all the tears, all the abuses, because that is leadership. You accept it, seep through, and take what you take from it all for the goal of making things right for everyone. You do not discriminate because, oh, it's an opposition, it's an APC state, we're not doing anything. That is wrong. We are all Nigerians before anything else. So in this, for once we are united. If we can be united during football matches, World Cup, why can't we be united with this Chibok issue? That is one of my personal pains as well, that why can we not be united with this Chibok issue? It should bring us together. But you have seen the antecedents of what happened. You bring rescue our girls, you bring release our girls. We're all mothers. So why can't we all come together for the common good? And I've said it before, the blame game should be over. All we're after, let them bring back the girls. Seriously, mm -hmm. if we're saying that APC is gunning for better governance, yes. There have been accusations that we've had the same old wine, just a new wine skin. Am I old? In terms of age, I might be old, but in politics, I'm new. When I say old, I mean the same people from the ruling party we now. Yes, we, uh, to I APC. understand so where you're going. Can we bring? can't do away with the older people. They're coming with the years of experience. So what the younger ones have to do is to make them listen to them come with the ideas and combine the two. Now, you don't believe that can work? We're hoping, if that would it work, can, we're hoping. Work. Now, the question of mm. APC coming with this new idea, better governance, the same people who were in their different parties that 
accusations used to go to from this same APC. Accusi accu accu accusations to, were they to, proven? No, the defection bit, I have made my stand on that, mm. that I am against political promiscuity. I call it, it is cross captain I call it political promiscuity. You have to be faithful to your party. Before you join the party, you must have thought through. I thought through before I joined the uh, CPC. I joined CPC because of the integrity of one man, General Buhari. And I believe his ideals is what will carry the party through. And he is part of APC as well. And he will impact on the party. So I tell people as well, try and be faithful to the ideals of the party you belong to. You come into a party, you complain about that party, you go to another one. You don't get it easy there, you have problems, you move back again. That is promiscuousness. And it has to end. How many other countries do you see politicians moving back and forth from political parties? You don't. And I've said it before that the APC, this merger, we made history by having that merger. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. From the days of Awolowo, they have tried mergers and all, and it never worked. It was alliances they now had. So now you have the merger. This is an opportunity for politicians of different backgrounds to come in, bring all their good parts, and we come together and form a strong, viable party that I hope will not be in opposition for too long. Now let's get back to issues that pertain to women. Yes. You run this forum for women in politics. Yes. Want to know about it? Bringing women across different political, political parties. parties. Yes. What exactly is that for? Okay, you find that women in politics, be you in any political party, the same challenges we face as APC women is the same challenges that a woman in any other political party faces. We had been uh, meeting with the United Nations Women, UNDP Republican Institute. They'd been doing training workshops for across different political parties. And we sat down one day thinking about it. Why don't we form a forum where we come together, compare notes, think of ways we can all help each other, but still remaining within our political parties. And one, the, one of the first challenge we had was the issue of women not going so far in politics without a godfather. So in a way we thought, why don't we create political godmothers? Really? Yes. But is there need for the godfatherism or some, motherism some, yes. at somebody, all? Somebody has to put you through politics. Even when you're doing your internship as a market woman in the markets, you find the young apprentice coming to help. You but you know when we say godfatherism in Nigeria, it doesn't just come with mentorship alone. Okay, when I say godmotherism, the, I'm saying it, it in means terms of mentorship. the money of bags of politicians. No, 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 it's not the money bags. Okay, let's use the word mentor instead of godfather okay. <laughs> and godmother. To have mentors that will uh, put them through. So what we do, we pick girls from each state starting from the polling unit level up to the state level and we start training them we've done a media engagement whereby we teach them on how to use the media for their campaigns and all that those that are interested in running for elective office apart from the party offices we train as well we're going to be pairing them with women who have already been elected into office so that they learn the rudiments of politics and that way we increase our number. Thank you so very much, Barista Sharon Ikeazo, for your time with us on Women in Politics. And I hope next time we come, you'd allow us in. Thank you. You're most welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. My people will say a sweet soup is not necessarily large in quantity. And that is what we're rounding off on this edition of Women in Politics to bring you another exciting edition. You must look forward to it. And if there is anything you should remember on this edition of Women in Politics is to start politics, money doesn't come first. Brand yourself wherever you find yourself, be it a rural woman or an urban woman. The first thing you should be thinking about is brand yourself. And you know one thing about branding, it doesn't necessarily start with money. 
So wherever you are, start thinking of branding yourself. The next edition promises to be more exciting. Thank you so much for being there. I am Ebulomo Adekunle. Oh, my God.